when I mention uh, evaluation, the word evaluation uh, to people, uh, and I say, what does it mean to you? A lot of people um, immediately say it's, oh, it's about feedback. Yeah, it's about the form. It's about the survey. It's, um, it's that person in the street who's asking me uh, questions about an experience or about, um, you know, it's some, something that I've just bought. Um, and that is definitely part of evaluation. Um, and people talk about the methods. Oh, it's a, it's a focus group. It's an interview. It's an image-based exercise. It's a thought bubble exercise. And we get into methods very quickly. But today, I haven't been asked to talk about any methods um, at all. So, um, and that's a real luxury for me. So I'm gonna talk about the stuff that happens before you think of a method. And there's lots and lots of stuff that happens before that moment when you decide, uh, I'm going to uh, you know, write a questionnaire or I'm going to do an interview with someone or I'm going to go for a walk and talk to somebody about something. There's a lot of thinking that happens before. So today, I'm going to take us back a little bit, um, sort of before uh, the sort of data collection and that part of the, the process begins. So um, I'm going to talk today um, a little bit about, more philosophically, about the, the nature of evaluation um, and what that means. Uh, in a general way. I'm also uh, going to give uh, an overview, um, very briefly, not too long, of uh, the evaluation disciplines in our field um, and, and where our field fits in, because there's lots of different types of evaluation. But our evaluation is a specific uh, thing that lives within a bigger ecosystem. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about different approaches and the different purposes of evaluation. Um, and then I'm going to give some considerations and uh, we'll talk you through a thinking process that might be helpful when you're designing your own evaluations. Um, and then I'm gonna end with some challenges. So I hope that sounds okay. So, um, as I said, this is, this is stuff that I have uh, picked up on the way. I've been doing evaluation for about 11 years, yeah, something like that, 9, 10, 11 years now. And um, one of the things that I read um, and that I feel very deeply is evaluation is a state of being. Evaluation for me is, is linked to experience. And it's really hard for us as humans to go through any experience, any form of experience, without having some form of evaluation. Okay, so um, if you think of a baby, uh, you know, even a baby who just uh, is born, you know, and uh, you've gone from this warm, soft, uh, liquid world, into something harsh and cold with bright lights and people and touch. You know, it is an experience that even though they have no words, they are evaluating. They're evaluating it through their senses. They're evaluating it through their skin, um, you know? So evaluation is, is one of those things that we do. It is part of being human. Um, and it is part of, um, it's, it's just part of every, every day, every moment of a lived experience. Um, as we get older, we don't evaluate things with our body in, in such a profound way that children do. Children evaluate by putting things in their mouth, you know, to find out what it is. Um, is it threatening me? Is it not? Is it something safe? Um, and that is a per process of critical reflection. As we grow older, we put words to this, you know, and we intellectualize it um, and we formalize it. Um, and it's very, uh, it's intellectually heavy. Um, 
but actually it's important to remember that all of our evaluation is something that is within us and it is um, something that your body and your mind are doing and when we're evaluating what we're trying to do is understand what is valuable what is good what is threatening um, what is virtuous about that experience um, what was meaningful what will i take away what will i reject so all of those kind of thought processes and uh, being processes take place um, and finally why do we evaluate <laughs> why do we do this as human beings we naturally evaluate because we are trying to understand our world in a deeper way we're trying to um, understand our place in the world also maybe and we use that knowledge uh, to hopefully shape um, the future decisions that we make the decisions that we'll go on to so um, yeah just so taking a step back from all the evaluation that you will be doing on these sorts of projects always good to remember that it is something that we do naturally it's not an extra thing it's part of the human experience and it's definitely part of being an artist and it's definitely part of our arts experiences and the arts experiences you will share thinking reflecting so i'm gonna now go a little bit away from the instinctual um, and what is natural into um, giving you an overview of where evaluation sits formal disciplines or fields of evaluation so i want you to imagine a street and i have i'm not a graphics expert but i have made a street for you it is the evaluation road very uncreatively named i'm sorry and on this street there are lots of houses and they share um pathways they share driveways they share trees but they all have a different perspective if you sit in one house you get one view and if you sit in another you get another so there are many 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 fields i think there's over 20 fields of evaluation which you don't need to know about but the main uh six i'm just going to show you on this street we have personnel where you're evaluating people in their jobs you're evaluating products you're evaluating things for policy or you're evaluating the implementation of a policy um, you might be evaluating not a theater performance but the performance of um, a certain uh, usually a person or a product um, but not perform i wasn't thinking of performance in theater sense there um, you might be evaluating a proposal so you might be part of um, a team who are putting a proposal forward for something and you're part of that evaluation process but we all belong to a big yellow house um, we all belong to this house of program a project that has a clear beginning um, a middle an end it has lots of people involved so it might have um, it will definitely have uh, you as a facilitator it will have funders it will have participants it will have their communities um, and depending on the project you will have different people involved we call that stakeholders in english in evaluation terminology um, so yeah uh, stakeholders they're all part of this program um, and there's lots of different windows in this house there's lots of educational programs there's all, all kinds of different programs um, and our uh, room is and, and we have one room in this which is um, around arts socially engaged arts projects so arts projects which are trying to make a difference so all our, our evaluations all the evaluations i have done they have this theme of change what change are you making what difference um, are you making with your project so that is our room in the whole scape 
of evaluation. I'm not going to talk much more about that. Um, that's just, just background. Don't worry, you don't have to know any of that. Um, when you're designing your evaluation um, your, uh, for your project, um, you'll have to decide what kind of approach you want to take. Um, and as you will know, uh, there are many types of uh, evaluations which, which happen. And often we see the spectrum um, one spectrum which is highly quantitative um, and it is uh, it uses a lot of numbers, it uses um, uh, testing, it uses surveys, questionnaires, it's often done with huge amounts of people um, and uh, its purpose is to usually prove something prove whether something works and it's from a medical its background is from medicine so it's about creating one thing one piece of learning or one pill that works for everybody a universal truth that you can give to anyone in any context and it will work for them and then way on the other side we have this qualitative approach um, which is uh, very different on, on every level. So you may work with big numbers. Usually we work with smaller than a thousand people on our, on our uh, sorts of projects. Um, you ask, you try to understand uh, what is happening, why it's happening. And then you might try and make a change, take some action afterwards. It's an ongoing process. You use different methods. Um, so, um, I'm just keep on losing my button here. Here we go. So, um, and that's where our field is. My my roots are in participatory evaluation, which is very similar. Sits within your your field of um, participatory um, work with communities making a change. So here we can see it's uh, the one side is trying to prove, the other one is trying to empower. Often, I'm not sure we always achieve that, but that's the goal, that's the aim. Um, we can have larger numbers or smaller numbers. Um, these are different methods people use. So one is very testing, one is more about people speaking, conversations. Um, and one, the goal, I suppose this is the most important, one tries to replicate, duplicate, and put into different contexts and the other one understands that this cannot be put into different con what we are learning here in this project in Leicester um, you will if you did the same project with the same facilitators you would get different results you would get different learning you will get different um, outcomes even you know because all of our work is dependent on context and it's dependent on relationships with people so before, when I was, uh, when I first started learning about this, these were very, very um, different, like warring football teams who didn't like each other. Um, but now, over the last 10 years, I think this, uh, this is much more merged. And although I am very much in the participatory camp um, of work, I still use some things from the other side as well, because we use both to kind of say what we need to say, what we need to learn about project. You kind of need both. Um, well, we do in, in, at the moment here in, in the UK. And so I'm kind of familiar with both, both sides. Um, so you don't, don't feel that you need to go from one to another. I think it's a false, it's false, this dichotomy, this divide. Um, just because you can, you want to do some arts-based creative approaches um, around with your participants around what they felt or what they experienced through a project, it doesn't mean that you can't also um, do a simple questionnaire or do a survey for an audience. It doesn't mean that you have to do one or the other. Give yourself you can whatever suits your project you can use. Um, Right, so there's a few things you're gonna uh, think about before you decide which approach. 
um, to take for which side, how, how you balance it. Um, and they are basically three things. There's your resources, uh, which what you have in terms of time, people, um, money, um, access to uh, spaces, all of that. And that's quite easy to understand in any project. It's quite, uh, it's, it's quite given. You have a set, um, it, it rarely changes throughout a project. Um, but the values that you hold and the goals where the purpose of what you want to do, that is a bit more complicated. Um, and that needs to um, be talked about. And because I'm participatory on that, more on that side, and I, I think it resonates with our field, we don't like to have one person decide all of that. We like to share that process um, with as many people as we can prior, before the project begins. So this all might feel quite abstract at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna talk it through as a, a process next. So we can go, go through it as a, a, a sort of thought process of how you would do this. So the first question is a series of questions we ask ourselves. So first of all, we will ask, um, why are we evaluating? It's a real, it seems like a simple question, but it's really worth um, returning to. Always return to that central thought of um, why, why are you doing it? It's absolutely fundamental that you understand that and the people that you're working with um, understand that. So um, it's, um, you, a part of that is understanding the project, obviously, like the, what you're trying to change. And what are the main, uh, what, who, I suppose, is driving the evaluation? Why are we evaluating who is driving this? Is it a funder who is driving your evaluation? Is it your organization? Is it someone, is it an artist? Is it the participants? Um, and I suppose it's um, the ethical question to ask is um, what is the power dynamic between all these people? So we have all these stakeholders, but is there one person that has more power or is it shared more equally? And there's not a right or wrong to this. Um, sometimes, you know, ideally we'd love to share the power and we'd love the funders to um, be part of our process and give us money and respond to our needs, but actually, and stay quite quiet, but also feed in a little bit. Um, but, but sometimes we will find that the funders have got much more power. Uh, sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes um, the organization who is doing it, the theater organization or the social organization that you're working with, they have more power. But it's worth considering that, thinking who has the power here? And because um, that, that will influence exactly what you, you deliver. So you're thinking about power. Uh, you also think about the goal. So what is the purpose of your evaluation? Is it, um, are you gonna tell a story? Is that what you want to do? Are you going to describe it perhaps? Um, describe the journey of it? Is it, are you there to actually just gather lots of learning about the working practices? Do you have to prove something? You know, maybe you have to prove something, maybe you have to uh, justify something. So these are all parts of your purpose, thinking about your purpose. Um, and then I think you, as a group of people, you will think about the values and what are the shared values. So um, what we find often in evaluation is that the practice is going on with a very high ethical standard uh, where people are listening, there's dialogue, people have got a shared space, there's equality um, given to the group. There's, um, but then when the evaluation comes in, 
it's bunged in right at the end and it's absolutely done with a different uh, kind of energy focus um, and how it's done is not given very much care or thought so um, that's kind of one of the things that we're trying to change with participatory evaluation we're trying to give it the same ethical balance as um, that you would for your practice same amount of time thinking and planning and the same amount of time um, uh, the same amount of thinking around ethics that you'd like to do so the um, so the values and I think you then will go on to who is involved um, who are the partners that's a little bit uh, close to why you're evaluating this is an important part of uh, designing your evaluation especially when you have lots of people um, in the group ideally you want to choose together what is valuable what is important to evaluate so you have to ask the question what do we want to know what do we want to learn um, what is the most important thing that we're doing? Um, do we want to learn as we go along? So do we want to check in periodically and embed it in our process? Or do we want to have a little check-in at the beginning and then come and check in at the end? Um, so it's, that might be a bit more how, but it's really the what what changes are you making and what's important to evaluate are you looking at the treasure and that treasure might be different for different people um, so for a participant they want to get something out of it the, the funder wants to get something out of it the organization wants to get something out of it and so all of these desires i think need to be spoken about. Often you don't get a chance to do this um, before a project starts. Often it's one person who did the funding bid who creates it all. But if you can, it's worth, after you've got your funding, having that meeting, having that meeting to um, chat about and, and discuss uh, and, and make sure everyone's desires are upheld or they have some um, presence in the outcomes that you decide for the project. Um, and then I think you think about the methods after that. What are the ways? How often are you doing it? Who is leading it? Is it someone from the outside? Is it someone from the inside? Is it peer-to-peer um, -peer evaluation? There are lots of people who can be doing this and it can be done in different frames of time. Uh, so it can, as I said, be done in a linear way or it can be done in a more spiral, sort of circular way throughout the project. Um, for a lot of our projects, I think that circular method works better where you're constantly checking in, learning, and then you're putting it into action. But then, always there is some sort of summation there's always a bigger circle to um, go over the, the whole project and your resources what you have in terms of time and money that will dictate a lot of of what is possible um, so yeah so how you are facilitating it analysis in participatory evaluation is very different you will be giving your things back to people you will be doing it with your participants but in other evaluations, someone will go away and look at all the data and bring it back. So thinking about how you want to analyze what you're finding out is uh, really key. Um, also what action you want to take out of it. And this is linked to the final thing of how you share it. You don't have to put everything in a report. You know, um, My experience is that very few people read the reports you know write these lengthy lengthy reports nobody i mean very few people read it so what are the different ways you can spread your message can share your learning there might be something in your sector that you want to share and you might want to share it creatively um, there might be something you want to share um, for policy makers there may be something you just want to share with your participants 
or just with your facilitators. So there's lots of ways of sharing evaluation. I think before we always thought about putting it in a big report and that was the best thing. Um, but actually now with all the digital data we have, there's lots of ways of uh, spreading that learning and spreading those messages. So um, very briefly, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about, challenges that we have. Um, they might be actually very similar to the challenges you have in practice in, the, in facilitation as well. Um, but you have uh, resources, always never enough never enough resources to do perfect evaluation. There is no such thing as perfect evaluation. Um, always some, you won't have a, you know, enough money or the space will change or something. Always we are, especially in the arts, maybe not in the private sector, but I haven't ever worked there, so I don't know. Um, there's always dropout from people who there's, um, I work in a lot of, projects where, well, obviously a lot of vulnerable people have a lot of barriers to attending projects. After initially engaging and a lot of enthusiasm, often people have commitments or it's not their cup of tea. Um, for many, many reasons, people drop out. They might come back in, but they do drop out. So that's, you lose that opportunity to learn something about someone's experience. You lose the opportunity to sort of, um, capture that yeah so sometimes people say oh i want to measure the change i want to look at what everyone knows at the beginning of a project especially in schools and then i want to see what happens at the end and you have 25 people at the beginning and you have four people at the end and so you know that system doesn't doesn't work you can't track a change like that yeah so there is dropout um Lots of barriers, including language. Um, that's a big barrier for us here in the UK. Um, people don't um, always want to write. There's a, a write or they don't want to draw. Or they don't want to. There's all kinds of barriers towards actually recording, mark making uh, um, around evaluation. Um, there's also um, questions people are uh, you know sometimes people don't understand the questions you often i worked in a project with uh women who were trafficked and they would be given a psychosymmetric form i don't know how you translate that it's a form made by psychologists um usually white male psychologists in the 1950s and they are given to groups of extremely vulnerable women after they participated in something really engaging, like a drama workshop, and they would be asked to reflect on their self-worth um, and on their self-esteem. And I mean, I speak English and I couldn't understand half of the questions on that form. So how you can call it it is called robust that sort of uh, method but how you can even begin to make people understand those questions and then the ethics around whether people should even be asked to engage in that type of reflection at the end of an arts project is huge so you know there's there's the questioning and the way you ask questions that can be a real um barrier and there is trust as well um trust is a big thing which is a barrier because as an evaluator who sometimes comes in i have to i only come in a few times and if i want to talk to someone um they have to trust that the information is going to be safe that it's confidential some of the questions they you know you on data and personal data people are not comfortable with so you have to take all of this in and all of these one of these or many of these will always figure as a barrier or a challenge in your evaluation. So you, that's why I say it's very hard to achieve the ideal evaluation, but that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't aim for it. You should always aim for it. Um, so just summing up, it's an intrinsic part of being human. We think, we reflect, we critically analyze, we take some things and we throw other ideas away. Um, it can never be value free evaluation 
has to be from somebody's perspective. It has to have some value attached to it. Um, it's a process, it's not a finished product. It's a constantly evolving process that hopefully will go through your practice that you're doing or your project goes all the way through. Um, and thinking around the ethics, it doesn't happen at one point, it happens all the way through. Every single one of those questions that I put up, why you're doing it, who you're doing it with, you know, all each one of those holds a deep ethical question around it. And it's important to try and, you know, engage with that question. You might not be able to answer it and it, the answer may change as you go through the project, but it's part of it. And that it's continually shifting, Ooh, sorry, and it's never perfect. <laughs>